Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd play the second of the uh, room games. Um, basically following up from my uh, first playthrough of the first game. So that continued the story. Um, let me just turn the volume up on it. Uh, because it is a little bit loud, that's why I turned it off. Um, and then we can uh, continue with this lovely game. Here we go. If you want to uh, watch my uh, first playthrough of the first game, the link will be in the description of this video. You can go there and take a look. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Double click on the note to focus. Here we go. Uh, come on. There we are. I wish to share and I am blind, but I have a. Um, in order to save a bit of time and limit the file size a little bit, and uh, for this video, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna bother reading all these notes. Um, but they are quite interesting. Some of them do contain uh, clues to how solve puzzles so it's worthwhile reading if you're playing the game for the first time yeah uh -huh. okay let's take a look at the other table and ah here we are right need to solve this puzzle Nope. Nope. Yep. Uh huh. There we are. Friend the eyepiece. Okay. Yeah, the hairpiece was damaged at the end of the previous game. Right, let's take a look. Yep. Explore the room. Well, the next piece is right here, right where this letter is. There it is. And like I said, I'm not going to bother reading that, but that's part. Of, that's an interesting part of the story, right? And these, this is where those pieces go to, right? There's one, and here's the other one. Okay, now we need to free this metal ball. There we are. Strange brass fear. As is the case with these games, it always pays to examine the objects after you pick them up. Looks like something can be moved there. Ah, there we go. Looks detachable, but not by hand. Okay. I think that's where it goes. Interesting. If I remember correctly, the message the, uh, here, the first one, should have the clues to solve in this eyeball thing. Okay, south, east, south, west, north. Alright, so... South, east, south, west, north. There we are. Okay. Take a closer look, yep. Well, pretty much done with this table. Time to open that other box. Okay. Now, also to speed it up, you could simply 
you know, click on it and it won't do anything, but uh, if you activate that, you should be able to progress. And then you basically click on the sphere and what you need to do is highlight these symbols. Well, find and highlight them. Okay. There we are. Okay, there must be another symbol somewhere around here. Interesting. There it is. Okay, spooky. All right. Okay. Ah, uh, that's right. Okay, so yeah, what you need to do is basically make this symbol with something with with these bits and something in the scene to open the next door. The flashing stuff doesn't help. There we are. So let's just there we go. So yeah, epilepsy warning. It does contain flashing images. And it looks like we're making progress. Done well to emerge from the crypt. Okay, let's press on. Uh, this is my favorite level of the game. Basically, you're aboard a ship, a galleon. Much you can see in a minute, but uh, we'll change that in a sec. Right, well, that's the model of the ship you're currently on board of, apparently. And uh, you've got some clues here in the notes. Let's see, foremast, crow's nest, and cannons. Okay, well, let's start with the mast. Okay. Oh. It's a small cold key, but as far as I can tell, there is no uh, keyhole anyway yet. <coughs> right, let's take a look. Cannons. There we go. And look at that, a keyhole. Right, this should come in handy. Again, there is a um, note over there you can read, but I'm not going to. Okay, a strange shaped key. Yeah, this is for the next bit where you're supposed to open up a pirate's treasure chest. Nice key. And you can move this crystal here to light up the next bit, which is the treasure chest. Again, there is a journal on the floor here that you can double click and read. <coughs> but what I'm going to do first is f focus on this pillar here. There we are. We need to move these to open up that bit there and grab another key. Yeah, it's just a normal key. Okay. Now before we progress on to actually opening it, uh, opening the chest, there's the um, the handle here that contains another little secret. A strange cylinder, which actually is yet another key. You just move these handles, and there you go. Right, now we can actually begin to open the main chest. Alright, move these bits, and now we need to match this shape in the middle 
into the uh, shape of this key. So you've got the square bit. Okay. Um, yep, that looks more like it. Uh, no, it's square up top. It is square on the top, yep. And let's see. Yep, that I think, or oh, maybe, let's see. Yep, there we are, and that opens the lid. But, like I said, there are three keys, so quite a secure chest. Now you need to look at these little windows with your eyepiece to find that you can move some stuff. And it opens up a few other bits. Right, here's the other window. Okay. And now we need to open up more windows by pressing on these little buttons. Okay. And the last one. Right. That opened up this. Now, we use this thing and uh, open up yet another lid. Okay, and now you basically need to follow the course of this pirate galleon to um, unlock the next bit. So it says here we went north to west to, so north to west to three south. Okay. And that's basically this, you need to go to follow it, so north to west to one, two, three, south. Let's see if that's correct. Yeah, I think so. There we am. <coughs> right, and this is where the third key comes in handy. Right, okay. Here we are, so let me remember how to do this before I even progress onto the actual instructions on how to do the uh, map bit. Uh, oh yeah, basically you move these bits here first. And you start with the left portion of this puzzle. Okay, you don't move that over there yet, you just move it up here and leave it there. And then move the other pieces up. And now you do the same thing on the left hand side, oh sorry, right hand side. But this time around you move this bottom piece all the way in. And then you move the top piece and there you go, you got a keyhole. Alright, let's turn the... And that clears up a passage right now. I'm not going to read the instructions because I remember how this goes. You basically need to end up in that uh, top left hand corner. So you go here, then you go up. And then you go into there. Okay, I'll flip it over and here's the interesting bit. Here is where you um, activate the mechanism in this chest, but apparently it turns the galleon that you're on around. Here we are. And you need to turn to starboard or the right hand side basically. Just turn right. Yeah. Wait for it to turn itself, and then what you need to do is align these images. Uh, close. Yeah, that's not too bad. And that clears up the fog. Right, again, I know the instructions, so basically what you need to do is you need to go all the way south, then a bit to the east, and then come up come up to this bit here, so... Yeah. Let's try. Yeah. 
I mean, if if it if if you make a mistake, you'll just reset itself, and then you'll you'll try again. <coughs> Sorry. Right. Okay. Get this painted figurehead, and the chest slams in your face. Great. Right now, what you need to do is go back to your uh, ship's model and get the uh, figurehead put on it. Well, attach it to the model here. Yeah. Right. It opens up this little bit. Uh, ah, there's a model ship's wheel. Right, okay. Now you need to put the wheel on and turn it. Okay. And now we need to move that switch. And it does a number of interesting things. Okay, well, let's start with this. Okay, that opens up that. Now, I know the sh uh, ship's name, but what you can do is basically do that, and that's what you need to spell on those buttons that open up down there. So, Rose, it said. There we go. And that gives you another little half of a gem. Now you need to put it in. And move it. And that opens up another section. Okay. Um, well, there's two... Um, messages, one down here and one over there that you can read. That's part of the story and that one is from your uncle that you are chasing after. Um, I instead will concentrate on uh, once more trying to solve the actual puzzle. Uh, some of these actually have got moving bits on them, but not this one, I think. Right, so what you need to do next is to try and open this chest. Right, so put that first, yeah, put that first, there we are, weight down, remove that a little bit there, and unlock this. Now you can unfold it, okay, and what you need to do is grab this little disc, yep, and since it's slid open that little hatch, you need to put this disc in here, rotate it, move that bit there, and it uh, gives you another weight. And don't forget the uh, disc attached to the hatch. Okay, take a look at this weight. Is there anything peculiar about it? Nope, doesn't look like it. Okay, so go back to this. And I think, yep, fits onto the other one, onto the other scale. Okay, another hatch opened up. You grab that disc, so move it in here and put these uh, little bits in. Doesn't matter which way you do, um, you put them in on this, uh, in this instance. Right, I'll give you another weight, and you get these little things. Uh, what you need to do is make sure that they face the hole, like this. Okay, what that does is it will allow you to open this. See, those uh, rectangular, triangular bits, yeah. And you can pull out another disc. Right, now let's take a look at that weight. Uh, okay, that looks like it can be moved. Yep. Hmm. All right, triangular shape. I think there is something like that here on this scale. Yep. Okay, yet another hatch opens up, right. 
Okay, this one is a bit more tricky because one of these uh, bits is, has got an uh, actually two of them are like triangular. So, uh, right. Ah, and then there's that bit. Right. So what you need to do is you need to get that in there and then get this in here and then you can move these two. There we go. That gives us another one. And where is the disk? You need another disk. What you need to do is uh, notice how that this got like a pointing bit. You need to rotate it. There's the disk. All right, let's take a look at this. Ah, okay, I remember this one. You need to move these bits out. There we are. So now it's fully deployed. Okay, and I think that goes here. Yep. That opens up another hatch, the final one. Okay, now we need to put the disk in. Right, okay, this one. So if you just move it here, it's not going to fit because it needs to face the other way. So what you need to do is you move it in there, crank it around, put it back in, and now you can fit that bit in there and those two bits go in the middle. There we are. And the final weight. And there are no more disks. Um, can't remember if it was. Yep. You get a small weight and a big weight. Okay, the small weight goes in here. There's that little circular bit, so. There we are. So that moves that bit to the. Yep. And now you need to move the. put the final big weight over there. That should balance out the scale. Excellent. Well, done with this bit. And there's the next bit, and these are the bits required. This goes onto your uh, ship's model, and that goes into that box that just grows out of the uh, out of this table. So let's go back to the ship's model first. Put the anchor back where it belongs. Right here. Okay, that actually gives you the key for that chest, that well, that little chest that rose up. This metal star. Okay. Now we can go back to this round table. And begin to unlock this. Now if I remember correctly, it had a few bits again on the side that you need to manipulate before you get to the main unlocking portion. Uh, yeah. This bit. And I think there's one more here. Okay, that'll give you a little screwdriver. You need that. Because that thing there is a clock spring and you'll need to wind, yeah, to open the compartment where it's located. Right, okay, here's the uh, main key. Right, that opens up the box. Uh, okay, move this bit here. That'll flip it over. Then you need to uh, unlock this. Yep. Right, now the one other thing you need is the actual key for the winding mechanism, so you can move this little lever, whatever button here, and that gives you the key. Right, so now you're equipped to uh, get this mechanism fixed up and uh, working, so here's that flathead screw. Uh, there we are. There we are. Put the uh, spring in there and put the key in here and wind up the spring. Uh, yep, there we go. It's now working. Excellent. Now we need to click. 
Ah, yes. Now what we need to do is, um, there's this bit here, this lightly colored wood bit. So what we need to do is we need to move this. It will give you the time that you will need to set up on the clock, 2.50. Okay. Now, if I remember correctly, there was a way to get this. Okay, uh, 2.50. Ah, there we are. There we go. And it gives you a key. Now this was like, because it's kind of a, not little that well, uh, it took me a little while to find this, but basically, yeah, the keyhole is right there on top of the rim of the chest. Right, uh, it's this bit. Okay, well, you use your eyepiece, and then you need to reassemble the image. Yep, there we am. And that gives you the little pyramid. Diamond shaped metal gear. Yeah. Okay, I should close the uh, the little box. And what you got in the middle is a pyramid without its top, where that's where this piece goes. That looks familiar. <coughs> okay, now we need to m once again create this symbol here with the pieces and something else in the scenery. There's just a lot more pieces now. If I remember correctly, yeah, if you turn left, ah, this time around it's not the scenery, it's just the pieces. There we go, another door opens up. successfully navigated the secrets of the ship, yet this grim ordeal will become increasingly challenging. Right, okay, let's press on. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, interesting place. If I remember correctly, yeah, there's this bit here. Yep, metal bar, and now you need to give this thing a push. Right, okay, and some sort of temple. Well, let's focus on the on this thing. Again, there's a note from your uncle there, but I'm going to concentrate on the actual puzzle pieces. First of all, this doesn't quite fit. I mean, it's a golden tower on top of a wooden box. That's, like, weird. Uh, and then, oh, yes, okay, you need to move that. Then here, then flip the switch, and you get this uh, small token. Uh, Alright, let's continue to examine the box. I need stuff for that. Uh, okay, now let's take a look at what else is all around. Uh huh. Yeah, this little chest here. Oh, and this plate. Yeah, you need to clean it of dust. What you do is you just hold down the left mouse button and just move move it around until the symbols become clear of dust. Don't have to clean the whole thing, just as long as you can tell what it what it says basically. I mean you can if you want to. But it's not necessary. That's for the next bit basically, but since we're already here Right, so on this chest there is this handle here. Yep, I'll give you a length of string. So you got a, a metal bar, a length of string. Yeah, what these things are for are this cro uh, they're for this crossbow. So you put the metal bar in, put the string in. Um, 
you still need the trigger mechanism for this, but there is a uh, a small wooden handle, and that goes onto that first wooden box right here. Okay, what you need to do is now move these shapes to coincide with these symbols here. Um, if I remember correctly, this can take a while to move them around a bit. Yeah, because it doesn't go that far down. Yep, okay. Right. Damn it. Like I said, this can take a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, if, if, if the game feels like you are stuck, it will give you a little hint. Something like that. Yep. There we are. Like I said, some of these puzzles can be a bit tricky, especially if you haven't played the game in the ages. Or you've never played it at all. But uh, they're not particularly challenging, just... Uh, it's a matter of just figuring out a way to deal with them and then, then it works. Right, okay, so I need to put this triggering mechanism over there. Nice. Okay. That should give me... Come on. Alright, weird. Ah. Nope. Okay. Needs to go over there. Ah. I need to open this up a bit more. Okay, now I need to put the uh, bolt in, load it, and fire the thing right at that hole by basically moving this trigger. There we go. Okay, interesting. Okay, not going to read the notes. Um, well you can part of the story. Right, this is where this little um, metal token goes. And it's basically a little game. What you need to do is you need to get this token to where that black token is over there. Here's the um, issue. The black token will eat your token uh, or try to eat your token. So you, what you need to do is you need to avoid the black one and get it to where the black one is at the minute. So you move one, it moves one. Okay, now you need to figure out a way to avoid it and get to that bit there. Well, actually that one over there. So here's the other thing. This island moves, so... Okay. Now that's going to eat me. Right. And now... It's on the back foot because I've... Yep, there we go. I've raised the head of it. Right. Okay, that opens up this and gives you a small key. A strangely shaped one. Okay, that reminds me of that other box down here on the floor. And I think that's where it fits. Yep. And then it gives you this little, well, this large stone block. What it is, is actually 
a hammer that you need to attach to the bottom part of this wooden, uh, sorry, stone table. Um, right there. And now what you need to do is you need to rotate this wooden wheel thing, charge up the hammer, and then let it go. And basically you need to do this a few times to break that stone plate down there. Get in there. There we go. Right, that gives you a, a shard of glass, which is actually a part of that mirror up there. And now, before you do this, take a look at these symbols down here and remember them. So it's this J and then those corner things. Okay. Right, so now put that shard of glass in here. Okay, right, and now we need to put those symbols in, so it's that J thing, there's that corner bit, but it's the J bit first, and now you need those corners, whatever they are, yeah, there we go, and that turns the uh, wooden box into a golden one, now remember we grabbed that uh, gold tower, Right, well, first things first. Yeah, let's uh, let's put the tower back in where it belongs, right in this corner here. That'll give you a dagger. There's nothing really special about it, but it uh, does come in handy now. What you, what, also, what you also need to do then is, uh, and what I like to do, I remember this bit correctly, is I need to light up, uh, can't remember which ones, it's like you basically press them and I think, yeah, but I can't remember which, uh, there is a solution to this puzzle somewhere else, uh, but yeah, you swing back here and there is this bit here that you can move to open up those gates down there and now you need to go into this thing and line up the doorways. Okay. That one is going to be down there somewhere if I remember correctly. Yep. I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah. <laughs> There we go, that's the next symbol. Right, and that's for that mirror. So that's the U shape and the X. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing it's to turn the uh, chest back to the wooden one. So U shape. Yep. And the X. There we go. Yep, now we've got the wooden chest. Okay, now, if I remember correctly, the solution to this puzzle... Uh, yeah, yeah. Remember, on the golden chest, you got buttons here. On the wooden chest, you just got crosses. So this is the solution. You need to press that button, that button, and that button. But that button is missing on the golden chest. So just, yeah. So if, you, if you're ever stuck on which buttons to press, make sure you are on the wooden chest, and then take a look at the diagram on the back of it. Um, yeah, so that, that, and I think you'll find, yeah. Now, we did pick up the dagger, and the dagger goes into the wooden chest at the top right here where the slot is. Interesting. Let's pick that up. Straw effigy, and look, the missing gem. Okay, now, before I turn that back to the golden chest, the straw effigy goes down here. If you click on it, it smells like burnt straw, and if you click on that, it smells like something could slot in here. It looks like some, yeah, basically, you put the effigy here, and that is basically, well, it's filled with oil, essentially. Right, so I leave the effigy there, and now we need the J and the 
triangle bit again to turn the uh, box back to um, yeah back to the wooden bit there we go sorry turn to the golden one and yeah don't you getting confused right um okay now you go all the way to the back now you got a missing piece put it in and that's that that and that and that opens up this again i'm not going to bother reading the notes but it gives you a piece of piece of flint right okay so now you go back to that straw effigy you put down on the into that hole there on the ground and you attach the flint and you set this effigy on fire there we are Interesting. Right, now what you need to do is go back to your lovely crossbow. Grab another bolt. Put it in here. Load it up. Double click to aim. And shoot one of these bags. I think it's that, that one there. Okay, that opens that, that little bit. Right, let's go there and take a look. Okay, not gonna bother reading the notes. Uh, grab metal object with a star shape at either end. And, <coughs> and she got this. You need to return back to this lovely uh, chest on the floor and put this bit in here. Then, press down with the lid Open it up again, and you get this little metal shard with a ridged hole in the center. Okay, that goes on the golden chest. Right here. Okay, now you need to use your eyepiece to move this bit so that all of these uh, red bits are lined up in a circle. I uh, can't exactly remember which way it was the quickest to move. Uh -huh. There. Basically you move it right, yeah. Okay. Now you can take that off. Basically now what you need to do is align these symbols here with the, the counterparts on the rim. So I usually like to concentrate on this wavy 3 symbol and just move it. There we are. Okay. Human skull, yeah, but I've never seen a human skull like that before. That's looking ominous. Okay. Now, this human skull goes to this bit here. Stick it up there. And now, you move this little handle here. Okay. And now we need to assemble this uh, house symbol again. Like I said, I could, I could do without the flashing bits. Uh, I don't have epilepsy, but it's still annoying. Oh, fuck's sake. Sorry, but this flashing is annoying. Right, uh, it's somewhere down here. There we are. In the third game, you can actually, if, if it bothers you, you can actually, in my case, uh, with these flashing images, just close your eyes and 
proceed. Yeah, uh, handle yourself out in the temple, yada yada yada. Let's move on. Okay, I think this is going to be the. Uh, oh yes, the Victorian seance room. Right. Well, let's begin. Not gonna bother reading any of that, but you need this uh, viewfinder piece. And what you need to do with the viewfinder is concentrate on this camera. Stick the viewfinder in. Okay. That gives you a small metal handle that you then put in here. And you uh, extend the, uh, the camera. Okay, now you go back to the viewfinder. And you need to focus it. There we are. Okay, interesting. Now there's a, a whole bunch of different puzzles on this table. Uh, you can click um, on the envelope down there for some story. Um, right, what you need to do here is... Okay, you concentrate on the lamp first. Click that button there. I'll open up this. And I'll give you this small key which uh, is of an interesting shape. You can move these various bits around to create various shapes with it. Right. Then you go to this keyhole here, and it should tell you what shape the key is supposed to be in. So pretty much straight with a little bit sticking out. Okay, so... Uh, no, I want the other one. I said I want the other one. Is that it? No. Ah, it's got a little bit sticking out already. With all of these lined up and it's got that little... Excellent, so just put it in. Okay, now you need to arrange these drawers according to... Uh, there is, I think in one of the uh, notes, there is, a, there is a hint. Ah, it's not, it's not in the notes, it's... Um, table legs, they will tell you what numbers you need to arrange these, uh, yeah, bottom of the table, table legs, if I remember correctly, it's five, four, and then two. Yep. And that gives you a light bulb. Okay, now you need to use that peculiar key again to uh, open this, right. Okay, so what we've got is we've got a short bit at over there. Uh, doy. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Okay, so we got the um, short there, that one over there. Something like that. I mean, it has that little protruding bit over there, so... Yep. Okay, now you need to maneuver this ball to pretty much the bottom bit somewhere, right? Yeah, it needs to go in here. Okay, so... Some pieces of this uh, cube can be rotated. There we are. Okay. That will go over here.
And there we go. Okay, I'll give you a tarot card. Right, and now there's still one more lock to open with that key, and it's right here on the left. Okay. So now you need to modify this key once more. Okay, so what are we looking at? So the bit with the protruding thing should be at the bottom. The small bit should be on the right. So the protruding thing is at the bottom. The small one, smaller one, should be on the right. And that one, if I remember correctly, should be at an angle. Something like that? Yep. That's it. You don't need that key anymore. That was the last lock. And now you need to move these bits to unlock the bit in the middle. Because it's being held by these handles, so you need to move them out of the way. There we are, and now you can grab this bit. Okay. Now that bit goes here, but there is also a this bit that you need to move first as well. Okay, and there's also a normal drill that you can, again, read the message and grab this torn piece of an um, old photograph. Okay, now this bit you picked up goes here. That gives you a long metal lever, right. And where that goes is onto this typing device. Right, what you need to do is spell the first word. So the first word is right here, it's called, it's infinity. So what you need to do is you need to move this little thing here, highlight a letter, hit that button that you just attached. So in, It's a little cumbersome, but yeah. And then hit that button over there. <laughs> I wish I can use that thing as fast as this ghost does it. Jeez. Okay, this is the bit for the next um, puzzle. You began at home staring at the stars, so much to discover, so little time. What you need to concentrate here in this uh, um, clue are uh, a, a few words. Uh, home, stars, and time. Those are the ones that you need to uh, remember. But uh, again, you can always come back to that. So now what we need to do is go back to the camera, stick the bulb in, and then there's a button here for the flash. Hit it. Okay, move this out. And look at it. Ooh <laughs> Weird stuff. Okay, that box appears in the middle of the table. Nice. Put the, uh, uh, where is it, uh, stars, what was it? yeah, stars, okay, put the tarot card in there, right, and now, this is where that um, thing that the ghost typed, that message, comes in handy, so, what began at home, staring at the stars, so much to discover, so little time, so it's home, stars, time. Home, home, yep, it, it goes from left to right, so home, stars, time, and then you press this button.
which okay right well you now know which word to spell next on this contraption voyage Interesting. Okay, Cutler's ships brought us triumphant to a hidden temple. It was at home you proved a shallow friend. Right. Ships. So, Cutler's ships. Ships. Temple. Home. So, ship. Temple. Home. Uh, ship. Temple. Home. Okay, getting somewhere. Endless. All right, let's spell it. Endless. Seems to be typing, but there is nothing appearing, so it's an invisible ink, essentially. Okay, um, there's another little thing about this typing device. Um, I did remember uh, looking it up. You can look it up on Steam in the guides section. Um, there is apparently a bunch of other things you can type into here to communicate with the ghost that will uh, unlock some interesting tidbits uh, from the story. Uh, stuff from the first game and a few other bits. So um, go ahead and, and do that uh, on your own. I'm not going to bother with it. But yeah, you, uh, it's, it's quite amusing. You can tap some interesting stuff in and let the ghost uh, yeah, reply. Right, let's see. Up, up, down, up, down. Okay, so up, up, down, up. Three times down, up. So two up, down. Right, so what that's for is these little handles that appeared here before. So up, up, down. Come on. Yep. Up. Three times down. Up. And that opens up this and gives you the death tarot card. Right. And now you need to look at this text here again. Okay. Under these alien stars are quoted only death. I am saved by science, my muse. So what you need is stars, death, and science. Okay, we want stars, death, and science. Let's go and spell hope. Uh, 
Right. Penal graced me with time for a dozen lives work. Now death returns to take his due. Okay, so you need time, uh, death, and null. Problem is, I don't have null. Um, there is a bit I'm missing, I'm sure. There is a way to get at the null somewhere. I'm just going to move around aimlessly and until the game brings up a... Uh, yeah. Bell stop ring rather. Ah, yes. The bell got broken. There we are. Uh, I knew I was forgetting something. Right, let's take a look at this bell. Clapper from the bell. Yeah, you need to open these little bits up. That basically gives you a key. And then you need to navigate to this bit here, which is in a darkened corner, and use the key to unlock this bit. A brass dial. Now, you need to move to the uh, cabinet way over there in that corner there, and use this bell clapper key thing to unlock it. Right. Okay. Well, let's move to the top bit. There's a little book here. Okay. Gives you a decorative plate. Then you stick this plate in here. And you need to align it. On. Ah, do forgot that you can move that bit as well. Uh, right. There we go. And that spells the name Khan. And now you've got this red book that's sticking out. Let's move it. Red, brown, whatever book. Right, okay. And this is where that brass dial comes in handy. Now you need to spell the name Khan. I think you start by moving it right until the K letter is on. Then you move it back until the H letter comes up. Yep, now it's A. And it's N. There we am. And there's the null card. Okay, now we need to go back to that text. Uh, the null grace me a null. Time. Death. Okay, null, time, and death. Okay, and that's where that uh, tone piece of the photograph comes in handy that we picked up earlier. Stick it in there and take a look through your uh, eyepiece. Oh dear. Congratulations, you have found what remains of your uncle. Okay. You can read what he says in, in that little note he's got in the pocket, but I'm gonna 
concentrate on his hand here. Open this watch and take a look at it through my eyepiece. It should give me the key. Yep, got the ornate key. And now what we need to do is maneuver around him and put the key in here, turn it. Yeah, that looks familiar. Right, okay. Escape the curious events of this seance with all your faculties intact. Right, let's continue. This is going to be a really short level, if I remember correctly. All you need to do is make it to the other side in this boat. Um, right, well, there's this bit here. Oh dear. Okay, grab that handle. And then put it in here. And crank it. And there we are, level done. Like I said, really short one. Even short journeys can cover great distance. Okay. And we basically arrive at the final, if I remember correctly. Or maybe I might be mistaken. I think it's the final level of the game, but. I'm not quite sure yet. Let's see. It's been a while since I last played it. Uh, okay. I think there is... There are no more messages from your uncle, obviously, because he, uh, yeah, he got left in the previous bit. But, um, yeah, what you need to do is you need to go over here to this little cabinet and open this up. Grab the screwdriver. You can read what it says in that folder there. Okay, uh, let's close this back up. Screwdriver, right. Then you go here to this interesting contraption, and that's where the screwdriver goes. Right, that gives you this wooden box. Ah. Uh, Right, it's got these symbols, and obviously you need to... Um, okay, yeah, right. You need to uh, set the number of those symbols. Okay, um, where you find that out is here. This little bit. There's this handle where you can move it to set it on those symbols. Right, so let's see, we've got the wavy symbol. One. Okay. Might be one seven three, but I don't quite remember the. Uh, okay, so that's one. Where's that uh, infinity, whatever the heck it is? It can be a bit finicky turning this thing. To turn, god damn it! No, not the view. Okay, seven. Is that seven? Yeah, seven. Might be one seven three. is 173. That will give you a battery. However, it's flat. You need to charge it. And this is where you charge it in this little on this little machine. So you put the battery in there. And now you need to crank this wheel uh, clockwise. Yep, and you can let go of it once the arrow reaches the red bit and then throw the handle. And there we go, the battery is now fully charged. Okay, now where do we uh, put this battery in? Um, and we put it in on this table here. We put it in here. In this little, yeah, recess with electrical connections inside. There we are. Stick that in there. Then f flip the switch. Okay, now we need to focus the light beam 
There we are. And take a look at it through the eyepiece. And we need to align it with a reflective surface. There we are. Right click out of that and OK. We've got some progress. Interesting. OK, that gives us a star shaped handle. All right. Um, actually, there is one more. If I remember correctly, there is one more message in there somewhere. Uh, right, star shaped handle. Star shaped. Ah, here we are. That's where it goes. Yep, and you basically switch drawers. Partly two in, in, in here. Now let's open this up. Grab a drum of images, and there's also a letter down there. And um, there is uh, there's a switch here, but don't forget that there is also a preserved uh, insect at the bottom of the drawer. A giant water bug. You'll need it for later. And there's the switch here. Press that. Okay, that opens that. Ah, okay. There's one also in the previous drawer. So, flip the handle again. Turn the switch. Alright. This drawer has... must have... Yep. There it is. Okay, and that should open up that bit of the cabinet there. Okay, again, you can read the uh, note by yourself. This is where the water bug we picked up earlier comes in. Somewhere. Ah, I need to double click on this. There we go. Oh. Yep, it got connected. Right. I don't quite remember what the next step is. Um, ah! See that? That has a reflective surface. So what we need... I think... Uh, no, no, we can't move that yet. Hang on. I seem to be a bit lost in here because I can't remember what... Uh, well, you can put the, um, um, the drum of images in here. That'll open up another recess for another battery, but there is no... I don't have the battery yet. Um, honestly, I can't remember what the next step was. Yeah, I might have to go back to the... Just close the drawer, for Christ's sake. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, sometimes it, it is a little finicky. Yeah. Now I've done everything here. Ah, that's what I'm missing. There's a bit here. There we are. That gives us a large handle. Okay, and now the large handle goes onto the desk here. Into this hole right there. Okay, and now we move this bit until we get to this uh, di uh, hexagon shaped hole. Raise that up, keep moving it. It's a reflective crystal, and we need to reflect this light. There we are. Okay. And where is that going? Okay, that's going here. Now rem remember that reflective bug in that uh, other case. What we need to do is line it up with that bug. There we are. Okay. Right, there's a battery. Again, we need to charge it. There's also another bug behind it. And then, if I remember correctly, there is also the lid of this bottle that you need to unscrew and grab a piece of broken plaque. Now the plaque, the plaque, goes into 
Uh, oh yeah. Goes into the drawer. The first drawer. There's a. That's where the plaque goes into. And it fits right there. So let's put it there. That will give us a fuse, an intact fuse. Okay. Now we've got another bug that we can uh, put here. There we are. Right, now we need to charge the other battery that we just got. So go back to the uh, charging machine. Put the battery in. And get it charged up. Throw the handle. Oh dear. Well, I guess now we know what the fuse was for. Right. Let's get this blown out fuse out of here. And put the new one in. Okay, and now we're going to have to charge it up again. There we am. Thankfully that fuse didn't blow. Didn't blow, yeah. Right, okay. Got the battery. Now this battery goes into that film reel machine. Okay. And now if you just look at it, some weird experiments are happening here. Okay. How about we try with the eye piece, the monocle on? Good idea. Okay, we need to remember that um, symbol. So triangle and target. Okay. Grab the bug. Okay, now let's go back to that uh, bug display and put the bug in. Okay, a small metal handle. That looks very familiar. Okay. And it goes down here somewhere. Yep. Now... Remember those symbols, the triangle bit and the target bit. And that gives you a key. Interesting. So it's got pointy bit and then those two uh, horizontal ones. Right, what you need to do now is go to the back of this case where there is a padlock and you need to arrange the shape to match the key again rotate it and that opens this, this up right final bug and not much else okay all right let's go back to the bug cabinet Interesting. Right, okay. Now what we need to do is move this um, laser beam down. I mean, it's lighting up the bug, but what we need to do is light up that mirror that we just uncovered. Our lens. And now we need to align it as well with the... Uh, there we are. Again, not going to read that little journal thing, whatever. Just going to grab this lens. And it upgrades your current lens. Interesting. Okay, and now I'm going to go into the back here and use the lens. Right, that gives us the first clue 
Okay, so that's three. So that symbol is three. Yep. Now, if I remember correctly, the uh, two is that symbol there. I think, yeah. And the one is that one, yeah. All right, well, I don't need that anymore. Okay, now you need to flip these switches. That's one. That's two. And that's three. I was wrong. There was no other messages. Okay. Okay, now what you need to do is basically find your way back home. Uh, so, what you do is you use that, and then you use these sliders to line up that old symbol. Yeah, the house symbol. There we are. Well, the house got blown up. Right. And there we are. We've reached the end of the second game. Like I said, the, the, yeah, the first game in the series is pretty damn short. The second game is a little longer, but it's still fairly short. The third one is pretty long. I might... I want to do, an, uh, you know, the, uh, play, uh, the playthrough of the third game, but I might have to break it into bits into parts because it is pretty long. I mean, I could try uh, speedrunning through it again, but it, yeah, even then it still takes a while. Um, and the fourth one is, I would say, about maybe slightly shorter than, than, than the third, but marginally so. So yeah, so there we are. we reached the end of this uh, video. Thanks for uh, sticking around, and hopefully uh, if you're playing through the game and you're getting stuck in bits, uh, this might help you uh, navigate through it. Oh well, thanks for uh, watching, and I'll uh, see you in the next video.